Alright, welcome back everyone. My name is Pratesh here with Kaizen Crypto bringing you another video. So I hope you guys are all doing well. Thank you so much for joining me here today. In this video, I wanted to share with you all an article here taking a look at how Cardano differs from Bitcoin and Ethereum. So taking a look at this, as well as the highly anticipated Cardano Virtual Summit 2020 Shelly Edition coming up here very soon, July 2nd through the 3rd, we're going to be taking a look in this video as to what the agenda is going to look like for this event. So if you're interested in Cardano content, if you are going to be here for the Cardano Virtual Summit, this video is going to show you what exactly we can anticipate with this happening. So if you guys are interested in that type of content, be sure to stay tuned. All right, you guys, welcome back to Kaizen Crypto, where you guys subscribe for everything related to Cardano news, running a stake pool, decentralization, staking, all of that is here at Kaizen Crypto. If you guys do find some value from this video here today, please be sure to drop a like for me. It definitely lets me know that you enjoyed it. And if you guys are new around here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click that notification bell so you know when I post a new video. And if you guys have any comments or questions about anything we're talking about here today, make sure you let me know down in the comment section below. So in this article here, I've got pulled up from the Daily Hoddle. This is going to be from an interview recently we've seen with Charles Hoskinson talking with Altcoin Buzz. So he gave his perspective on some of the main differences behind Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Cardano. Now, a lot of this information is relevant to Cardano's initial whiteboard video where he explained the differences in the three generations of blockchain. So what I'm going to do for you is go ahead and read some of the quotes that he had talked about and we're going to discuss those. So taking a look, it's saying with Bitcoin, this was the first mover. This was the first generation. Really, it was the concept of can you have decentralized money, decentralized transfer of value, decentralized leisure, and somehow, some way, a dynamic and decentralized network will maintain that. This was not the case before Bitcoin. No one had ever pulled anything like this off. The problem with Bitcoin is that it's very simplistic in what it can do. It's not a criticism, it was a design feature that the architects of that system were trying to push. Hoskinson said that Bitcoin's limitation of supply pushing value gave birth to Ethereum. So with Bitcoin, you can't necessarily issue assets. You can't do a complex contractual relationship. You can't do dApps and DeFi and all these things. So the point of Ethereum, which was the first second generation cryptocurrency, was to try to understand what that model looked like. So it took everything from the prior generation, the decentralized ledger, the dynamic and decentralized control. But then it said, hey, now all of a sudden your transactions are programmable. So while Ethereum's programmability opened many doors, Hoskinson says that the second largest cryptocurrency is limited by its inability to scale and share data with traditional systems. So it's not good enough to just say, hey, we're going to build a system that's blind and deaf and it doesn't really understand or see the world around it. We need to build a system that's aware that there are other systems and communicate with them and move value and information. Hoskinson says that the limitations he sees in both Bitcoin and Ethereum led to the creation of Cardano. So when you bundle these three things together, interoperability, scalability, and sustainability, that functionality creates what we call a third generation cryptocurrency. Now to do this, we've had to embrace a very different way of designing things. We've went back to first principles, so we assumed nothing. We basically slowly but surely built up a corpus of capabilities, whether it be consensus capabilities or ledger capabilities, and programmability or voting systems and governance capabilities. When you string them all together, that's basically what Cardano is. So I will be sure to link to this article down in the description below. So now that we've been given a brief description of what the thought process was behind the creation of Cardano, what does this mean for the broader crypto space? So we know that Bitcoin is the OG, it's been around the longest, it's the first cryptocurrency. With Bitcoin, we can see that as far as operating things like smart contracts, giving your money purpose in terms of value transfer with a set rule behind that value transfer, not necessarily the easiest thing to do with Bitcoin. 
with Ethereum now, we see that we have these capabilities of being able to program our money and maybe put more of a story behind the transaction. However, when it comes to facilitating these transactions on a large scale and being able to reach billions of users, Ethereum is now encountering that issue. And we can see with the transition happening from proof of work to proof of stake, they are trying to solve that problem. However, with Cardano, they've addressed this issue right off the bat. Being a proof of stake cryptocurrency based on the provably secure Ouroboros algorithm, they're intending on building a provably secure, decentralized, scalable solution that is interoperable with other blockchains and other real world applications. So with Cardano, what I think is likely to happen with this, uh, we're gonna see much interest come into the project once we see staking live on mainnet. Staking is probably going to be one of the most anticipated milestones for this project. I know many people are looking at staking as a way of producing passive income. You know, with Bitcoin and Ethereum, of course, right now being that both are proof of work, the only way to necessarily generate tokens is to mine the actual token itself using an ASIC miner. With Cardano, it's based on proof of stake. The revenue that you generate for holding the token is based on your stake within the network. And you're able to earn passive income by delegating that stake to a stake pool. So a very interesting concept that's been very well thought out by some very top level thinkers. Now Cardano, in my opinion, I think that once we do see the release of Shelly, we could anticipate a big move in terms of price. Now this video is not intended to be a price speculation video. However, I think what we will see is that many people become aware that Cardano is gonna basically take the best of both worlds from Bitcoin, Ethereum, and add its own twist and make itself much more valuable because it's a scalable solution to both of these previous blockchains. So those are some of my thoughts regarding that. What do you guys think? How do you feel like Cardano will be able to put up against Bitcoin and Ethereum once we see Shelly live on mainnet? Let me know down in the comment section below. Next up, very highly anticipated. I know everybody in the Cardano community is talking about this. The Cardano Virtual Summit 2020 Shelly edition is around the corner. We're gonna be anticipating lots of cool things happening here, including several guest speakers. We can see Vince Cerf, there's Caitlin Long, Stephen Wolfram. Of course, we have Charles Hoskinson, Agalos Kiyas, and John O'Connor. So just to name a few of these key speakers that will be presenting at this virtual summit, I'm really excited to hear what these speakers have to say about this technology and what this space is gonna look like in the next coming years to decades. So they've just recently released the agenda for this event. So quite a eventful couple of days. I'm gonna be doing my best to keep you guys informed and engaged with this. I was thinking about doing a live stream. I actually did a live stream with Big Pay today. So shout out to you, man. I really had a great time. Uh, I think it's a really cool thing that you're doing. So keep up the great work. Uh, but yeah, as far as what we're looking at here, so it starts Thursday, July 2nd. We can see here that they've got Colorado GMT time as the standard. You've also got UTC and UK GMT time. So depending on the time zone that you're in, um, essentially it's going to be opening up with a keynote from Charles. So you definitely want to get there early. Make sure you don't miss that. Um, we're taking a look at some of the things that they are going to be discussing so here we can see this. If you guys do wanna check this out, it's gonna be linked on my Twitter. I'll retweet this. But essentially, they're talking about blockchain, uh, delivering solutions for business and enterprises, supporting and building the Cardano community, governance. And then they're moving on to talk more about supporting and building the Cardano community, science of blockchain. They're, they're talking a lot about different things that are related to business, they're talking a lot about things that are related to uh, enterprise adoption. They're talking about a lot of things that are relevant for getting Cardano built so that it can scale to billions of users. And what they're trying to do with their initiative in Africa is scale to meet the needs of people who are underbanked or completely unbanked. So lots of cool things there. We've got a jam packed day for Thursday. And on Friday, we can see that it kicks off around about the same time, talking more about Hyperledger, what Cardano's initiative looks like in Africa. We can see IOHK's authentication solution. That'll be very interesting. Uh, we're talking about Haskell. 
We're talking about physics meets distributed consensus. Very cool. So there's going to be so much stuff here, guys. There's a lot to talk about. Gogan, you know, we see with smart contracts. Um, I will be putting up a live stream and hopefully we'll be able to catch some snippets and share with you guys my thoughts. There is also going to be a rerun of this event with select portions if you are not able to catch the live stream. So no worries there. We will have plenty of content related to this event if you are not able to make it. But that is what I have for you guys here in this video. Just a quick update. If you guys haven't already seen this, be sure to check it out. Link will be down in the description below. These are just some things to anticipate here with the Cardano Virtual Summit. So last thing I wanted to leave you all with here today, taking a look at some things happening with the Kaizen stake pool. So right now we're going through the process of building our Cardano Haskell node. Uh, this process has been going very well with a lot of help from other stake pool operators. I really wanted to say thank you to uh, Duck Pool, who has been a tremendous support to me. I also wanted to say thank you to Kiwi Pool. Uh, both of these stake pool operators, as well as many others, have contributed immensely. And I, I just want to say I'm super grateful for all the support that you guys have been giving. And, you know, I really could not have been doing all this without you guys' help. So that's a quick update regarding the stake pool. The Haskell Shelley testnet is going well, working on getting that built as these releases are cut every week or so. So stay tuned for more progress updates related to that. And I will keep you guys posted with more relevant Cardano news as it happens. So guys, that is what I have for you all here in this video today. I really do hope that you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you guys have not already, make sure you hit that subscribe button before you go. All right, everyone. Thank you so much again, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.